Okay, so in problem number one, you want to solve this linear equation. And notice that this linear equation has sets of parentheses. In fact, it has two sets of parentheses, one here, one here on the left-hand side. There aren't any on the right-hand side of the equation. To get rid of the parentheses, remember we have to do that first, we're going to use the distributive property. So remember, this means two times x minus 3. So, so everything inside that parentheses, all these terms, has to be multiplied by 2. So you're going to have to say 2 times x, and then 2 times a negative 3. And the same thing here. So both of these terms, 2x and, and positive 1, you're going to multiply, because this is multiplication, using a distributive property, you're going to multiply both of those terms by negative 3. And so when you do that, you're going to get 2 times x is 2x, 2 times a negative 3 is a negative 6, a negative 3 times 2x is a negative 6x, and a negative 3 times a positive 1 is a negative 3. And that's going to equal 7x plus 5. So all I did in that first step was use the distributive property. Now you'll notice that on the left-hand side, you now have four terms, 2x, a negative 6, a negative 6x, and a negative 3. At that point, you have to recognize that some of these terms you can combine. They are like terms. So, for example, 2x and negative 6x are like terms. So, in, so, that, so remember, like terms are terms that have the same variables. They both have the variable x, and x is being raised to the same power, 1, 1. So those are like terms. So basically, all you really need to do is just uh, add their coefficients. So positive 2 and a negative 6 will be a negative 4. So 2x and a negative 6x is a negative 4x. And then your constants, you have negative 6 and then a negative 3. So negative 6 and a negative 3 is a negative 9. And that's going to equal 7x plus 5. All right, and then at that point, the next step is to either bring the variables to the right-hand side, the variables to the left-hand side does not matter, and then bring the constants to the other side. So I'm just going to go ahead, and most students, what they'll do is they'll usually just bring the variables to the left-hand side. So to do that, see, this is a positive 7x. The opposite of the positive 7x is to subtract 7x. And so, see, so see, if you added 7x, that wouldn't help you because 7x plus 7x is 14x. So basically, you wanted a 0 there. So 7x subtract 7x is 0. But what you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So if I subtract 7x from one side, I have to subtract 7x from the other side. So notice you, you have to align those like terms just like this. Now we're going to combine like terms. So we have a negative 4x and a negative 7x is a negative 11x. And then subtract 9, and that's going to equal 0 and a positive 5 is a positive 5. And now... No, remember, you're, true, you're trying to get the variable x by itself. So now, um, if you look at your equation, this is the only side where the variable x appears. So we want to try and get this term by itself. So right now I'm subtracting 9. The opposite is to add 9 to both sides. What you do to one side, you do to the other. And then you combine like terms. So a negative 9 and a positive 9 is 0. That's what you wanted there. A negative 11x and 0 is still a negative 11x, and that's going to equal. And then 9 plus 5 is going to be 14. And then to get x by itself, remember right now you're multiplying x by negative 11. Let me go ahead and rewrite this over. So you're multiplying x by negative 11. The opposite of multiplication is division. So we're going to divide both sides by negative 11. Make sure you only divide by the coefficient. Don't divide by negative 11x. All right, because that, that, that's because uh, then you're going to say x equal um, a value, and that's not going to be true anymore because if you divide by negative 11x, this is now 1. All right, and, and you got to be careful when you divide by variable. So, so never divide by the variable. Only divide by the coefficient. So, negative 11 divided by negative 11 is 1, but 1 times x is x, so this should be x right here. And that's going to equal um, negative 14 elevenths, and then reduce if you can. I cannot reduce here, and it's okay to leave it as, a, uh, as an improper fraction. 
if you wanted to write it as a mixed number, um, not a decimal, don't write it as a decimal because there are no decimals here, but if you wanted to write it as a mixed number, you could say 11 into 14, just like this. 11 to 14 is 1, 1 times 11 is 11, and then subtract and you get a remainder of 3. So this would be a negative 1 and 3 elevenths. Negative 1 and 3 elevenths. So either one of those will be fine. But there's the work. That's the work you had to show. Okay, number 2, this time you have a quadratic equation. Now this quadratic equation is not factorable, so you had to use the quadratic formula. And so remember the quadratic formula is the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. And so, so notice that this, this um, uh, quadratic equation is in standard form. So notice you have zero on the other side. So that's what you want. It is, in, it is in descending order. So before you take these values and substitute it into the quadratic formula, it is a good idea to determine what A, B, and C are. But remember, you must have zero on the other side, which we do in this case. So A is always going to be the coefficient of x squared. So A is 3. B is always going to be the coefficient of x. In this case, it's a negative 2. Even though it says subtract 2 times x, the idea of subtraction, the idea of subtraction means add the opposite. So you can think of this as adding a negative 2. So it's a negative 2. That's a coefficient. And then c is your constant, which is a positive 2. Then we're going to take all these values, substitute into the formula. So my variable is x. So you're going to say x equal. And then this means the opposite of b. Well, b is a negative 2. The opposite Notice I'm saying this. Let me go ahead and write it um, on this one. So, so basically you're saying the opposite of a negative 2. That's what you're saying. And the opposite of a negative 2 is a positive 2. Okay? All right. So, so this right here is going to become the opposite of a negative 2 is a positive. So we'll write 2 plus or minus the square root of b. And remember... Uh, um, we indicated that always put B in parentheses, whether it's positive or negative. In this case, it's negative. So you want to put in parentheses so you don't mess up when you're using your calculator if you do that. So the opposite, so B, which is negative 2, I'm squaring negative 2. That's what that means. Um, minus 4 times A. A is 3 times C, which is 2. All of that. So you have to extend it from here to here. Make sure you... you, you understand that this division symbol here has to go from 2 to the end of that square root symbol. Alright, and that's being divided by 2 times a and a is 3. All right, so mathematically you have to say this. <clears throat> then we get 2 plus or minus the square root of, so I'm going to simplify the discriminant here. So negative 2 squared is 4. All right, now a negative 4 times 3 is a negative 12, and a negative 12 times 2 is a negative 24. All of that, notice I'm going from 2 to the end of that square root symbol. All of that's being divided by 2 times 3, which is 6. All right, so then that's going to become 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 subtract 24 is a negative 20 all divided by 6. All right, now, you got to remember some things about, about the square root of a negative 20. All right, so first of all, you need to, record, you need to remember that, that the square root of a negative 1 is defined to be the imaginary unit i. And, and, and what we have here is the square root of a negative 20, so I'm going to end up with imaginary solutions. And, and you also have to simplify, um, you have to simplify um, the radicals whenever possible. So for example, you see that, that 20 there, even though it's negative 20, I'll come back to that. I'm going to write as 20. The square root of 20, remember to simplify that, you have to think about what perfect square goes in a 20 and always choose the largest. So the largest perfect square that goes in a 20 is 4. So I'm going to write the square root of 20 as the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. 4 times 5 is 20. And the square root of 4, remember, is 2, so it'll be 2 square root of 5. And so therefore, I have the square root of a negative 20 then, 
which I know I can write as the square root of a negative 1 times the square root of 20. Negative 1 times 20 is not negative 20. And we, we know that the square root of a negative 1 is i, so it becomes i times, and I just simplified the square root of 20, which is 2 to the square root of 5. And we tend to, to rewrite this in, in one of several ways. So, so you could write this as 2 times i square root of 5, or you can write it as 2 square root of 5 and then put the, the imaginary part at the end. Just make sure it doesn't look like it's under the square root. So, so notice how I wrote this. And I'm going to take this. I'm going to go ahead and write this one. So I'm going to take this one here and put it here. So the next thing you have to do was you have to say 2 plus or minus 2i square root of 5 divided by 6. Okay, now we also, the way that this looks right here, you see you have a 2 here, and then there's a factor of 2 in this term, and then there's your 6 that's in the denominator. This 2 and this factor of 2 and this 6 are all divisible by 2. So you can go a little bit further if you, it, um, in this case. So all of these are divisible by 2. So, so you're going to say 2 divided by 2 is 1, plus or minus 2 divided by 2 is 1, 1 times i squared of 5 is still i squared of 5, all divided by, and 6 divided by 2 is 3. So you could write it like this, or if you want to, you can write it as, as um, now this is a, the more common way of writing it. Or you could say 1 third, see 1 third, plus or minus i squared of 5 divided by 3. So that's another way of writing it, where you write as separate fractions. Or you could write it individually. Like, see how I have plus and minus? Remember, that really means two solutions. In this case, it's imaginary because of that square root of the negative number. So you could say 1 plus the square root, oops, sorry, 1 plus i square root of 5 divided by 3. And then the other one would be 1 minus i square root of 5 divided by 3. So all of these would be correct ways of writing the solution. But that's what you had to do here. So notice you did have to simplify. You also did have to know that the square root of a negative 1 is defined to be the imaginary unit i. And so that's why you see this i right here, the imaginary unit i. Okay? All right, so that is it. So, so that's how you, we solve this equation, the quadratic equation. And it was not factorable, so we had to use a quadratic formula. And this linear equation. All right, so, so that's the solutions to those two problems.